Hello everyone, welcome to another video of the course. In this video, we will start the analytic design of the motor. And first of all, I should explain the classification of design variables and also the electromagnetic design procedure, right? Because uh, this Excel file is based on this classification. Here in Excel file, you can see different tables, independent variables, dependent variables, and here we have update and tuning, right? So I classified these design parameters based on this logic. As you know, in every engineering design problem, we should classify design variables, right? At the beginning of the design. So for electric motor design, the number of design variables is high. And if we don't classify them, so the design will be complex and we cannot follow the logic between these design variables, right? So here you can see the classification. We have independent variables and we have dependent variables. And each of these categories are classified into two subcategories. Uh, we have fixed independent variables and we have independent variables that are adjusted by designer. Also, we have uh, direct dependent variables and indirect dependent variables. Fixed independent variables or actually our targets, our goals, right? For example, the output power or outer stator diameter, right? So the value of this parameter are fixed during the design. You can see them here, independent variables. The output power, rated speed of the motor, line-to-line uh, -line terminal voltage and the connection type and so on, right? So the value of these variables are fixed during the design and we don't have any freedom over the value of these variables. The second category are independent variables that are adjusted by designer. For example, the magnetic loading or aspect ratio, right? I will explain aspect ratio later. The aspect ratio is equal to the stack length divided by pole pitch. So we should adjust these variables. You can see, for example, here the magnetic loading. We should uh, be able to adjust these numbers properly to satisfy our goals, right? So here, for example, you can see the magnetic loading, electric loading, number of stator slots, number of rotor slots, and so on, right? We have a convention in this Excel file. Only you can change the value of variables with green backgrounds, right? For example, here you cannot change the value of this number because I implemented an equation here. So only you can change the value of variable with the green background color for the cell. The next category is direct dependent variables. Direct dependent variables are those variables that we can directly calculate their values based on the value, based on the parameters, that are exist in this category. For example, the output torque, right? The output power is a fixed number. The rated speed, desired rated speed is a fixed number. 
So immediately we can calculate the desired output torque. The motor should be able to deliver this torque, right? If we want to satisfy our targets. So we don't have any uh, freedom over this uh, variable. I implemented this equation here for the output torque, right? The output torque is the output power divided by rated mechanical speed. For example, here is equal to 5.1, 5.2. You can see the value of rated torque here that I will explain later. Right, the rate of torque of the motor. So, the last category is indirect dependent variables. Indirect dependent variables are those variables that we calculate their values through a sequence of calculations. Right, for example, the width of a stator tooth or number of turns per each coil. So, for calculation of the value of these variables, we should follow a sequence of equations. Design objectives are exist in this category. For example, the weight of the rotor. And uh, if you want to optimize the motor for a specific goal, you should pick up your objective from this category. In this diagram, you can see the electromagnetic design procedure. Here we have a blue block that is the electromagnetic design. Actually, our design logic is implemented here in this blue box, right? You can see this Excel sheet here, electromagnetic design. All of analytic equations that are implemented in this electromagnetic design is actually our design logic. You can see this diagram here. So we have two input streams and two output streams. The first uh, input stream is fixed independent variables. So you set these variables, for example, output power, line-to-line -line terminal voltage, the winding connection type, and the rated speed, right? These variables are fixed independent. And the second input stream is independent variables adjusted by designer. These variables, right? So, we have two output streams. The first one is direct dependence, and the second one is indirect dependence. As I said, we don't have any flexibility on direct dependent variables, right? For example, the output torque or line terminal, right? So the value of these numbers are fixed when we fix the value of desired efficiency, power factor, and output power, right? So we don't have any flexibility over the value of this variable. The second output stream that is indirect dependence, uh, you can see the value of this variable here. For example, the board diameter, the stator board diameter, right? Uh, this is an indirect dependent variable. So our design objectives are here. For example, the weight of active parts, kg of active part, outer stator diameter, efficiency, right? So when we do design, actually we pick up one of these goals, for example, the efficiency. And here you can see the function. The efficiency is a function of magnetic loading, electric loading, the stator winding, current density, and so on, right? So we pick up an objective or a combination of these objectives. So we should be able to develop a convergence logic 
to change the value of these uh, independent variables in such a way that we satisfy our goals, right? So here you can see the iterative process of the design, right? We set up the value of these variables. We do design, check uh, the value of these objectives and iterate over this loop to find the optimal design. So the convergence logic is important, right? Depends on your uh, optimization methods and depends on your experience, right? If you have a good experience and a good knowledge about the value of magnetic loading for different uh, ratings of the induction motors, so you should be able to design faster, right? But uh, this diagram just shows the general procedure, and also here you can see the Excel file in this slide, right? I have these tables, independent variables, dependent, and we should update and tune the design after calculation of dependent variables that I will explain in detail. Okay, so let's continue the topic, the analytic design, in the next video. Thanks for watching.